this is Gamer1745, and we're going to be taking a look at Black Ice 10.40 for Hearts of Iron 3. Will I fall in love or rage quit or both? Who knows? We will see. This well, before we get into it, if you haven't already, if you're new here, um, will you please hit the subscribe button and the like button for everybody can hit the like button and of course i really love your comments below post them good bad indifferent whether about me or the game or something else um right okay enough of the sales pitch good and like i say i've started this up and looked at it a teeny little bit not even had the clock move a second so we don't know what we're going to really find here um i have a vague grasp on things um and so this this isn't going to be some mega series playthrough that we're going to get to some conclusion um because if it's going that well i'm going to start over again and um do other things but yes yeah, so this is just a good quick look at it hopefully this adopting history stuff will go pretty fast okay right this is i've already looked i'll probably make a few quick tutorials um this is not one of them so if you wish to okay these like i say are all worth looking at i will look at some of those um later but uh it will take a while so i'm not going to do that actually you know we're gonna disable that okay so that's not showing up again and as you can see here it's a very i was sort of shocked when i first got here very sort of clean start but then you hit here and i just go into normal for a normal look at it then you come here yeah the usual black ice you know i'm glad it's here but it's for someone who tests a lot and has to when you test you have to start from a new start um it goes through this way too much um so yeah um let's see um don't know if some of the the tricks and things that were important before on um, getting some of the factory boosts are still there again if you want to look at getting started and setting up in some of my other series for the earlier versions of um nothing okay um here we'll see about that later on okay um well, i guess we're not gonna bother too much with some of this min maxing here um, okay i'm um, always early in the game it is economics focused for me yeah this is the min max that's eh, not so bad you might be able to get it a little better, but now if you wondered, I've turned the music volume down. Maybe the game volume is too low. Um but um and i've removed all of their um music for black ice that they have and it may be wonderful and great but um it is not youtube friendly with the copyright issues um, it was engineers um yeah, we're just going to make it a standard. I think I have one more choice. Um, this is motorized. Well, one area, or one unit I'm least likely to throw in. Two a division is anti air specialty. So, but engineers. Um, 
this is just standard, so artillery upgrade. Okay, we have one more. Um, artillery engineers recon, I think we put. Hopefully, I got all that right. I do like that element here. Okay, um, let's go difficulty settings. Um, oh, we did players uh, skip this all together. Cute idea. Um, we're just going to do normal Soviets. I take, and I'm not saying that that is what, um, Oh my god, Dusty, whoever else is working currently on Black Ice as being, um, correct, but I take normal as, when I see normal, I sort of, to my mind, says historical. So, um, that's what I, um, want to play against and if you go oh yeah but um it's too easy well that's a fault of the um ai and now if you want to play now and now if you and i have played it on harder difficulties and done fairly well i don't think i've done it on the, the super hardest yet but occupation of the Rhineland, yes um yeah, we'll do that. Maybe we should have done some trades beforehand. Um, but we'll see how this goes. Now, for here, we have... Well, we don't need a lot of diplomacy, so let's lock that down. We don't need a lot of spies, but we'll take a few, I guess. And officers, we don't need a lot early on, but we'll take some. All right, uh, again, as you know with me, infrastructure, I guess I meant infrastructure, which, you know, um, or, you know, um, which this is obviously educational and other, you know, type, not just literal buildings and railroads and bridges and stuff, but as opposed, first, not exclusively, but first yeah we already clicked here i want to do the 36 technology special okay this is new to me i've literally never clicked on this before okay um none of these are open yet but i'm just looking okay our det basic artillery detachment uh, okay so mix support ss mix support okay so this is something that will probably uh, have um, have flight engineer upgrade. Something that will um, have country flag impossible. Maybe I don't know. Um, something that may pop up here that will allow us to increase some of these other things. Okay, I as you can tell, literally not clicked on some of this stuff before. A lot of stuff not okay. Standard infantry. Grades, bullets. Yeah, we'll get to there. Well, let's come down to here. To Germany, yeah, okay, it's on the Blitzkrieg. A lot of this, I guess, hasn't changed, which a lot of it shouldn't have changed from the last version because I don't want to completely, and you shouldn't completely revolutionize everything all in one go. Okay, um, well, I don't. Now this might allow um, upgrading other things. Okay. Always want to get the stuff that will unlock other things in time early or earlier than other things. Aircraft prototypes. Single engine. Fighter prototype they look fairly advanced on. 
twin engine not so much four engine not so much okay well let's come down here Here again, I look for things that damage control, I think, will upgrade. Currently operating vessels and fire control, which I think we should, both of those should, but something like, you know, um, light um, cruiser armor plate thickness shouldn't, you know, without sending it back through the production queue again. That's how I'm taking all of these things. Pocket Battleship, we'll just get that, I guess. Do we even bother with that? I don't know. Okay, training. This is something totally new here. Training laws are selected in the political screen, and their effects can be checked here. Basic training does not change stats. Okay. Then units minimal training, or unit specialist training. Okay, and what they're talking about here is these, um, and the note does say whatever is selected at the time of putting a unit into the production queue keeps it through to the end of the thing, um, end of the unit's life. I guess maybe maybe send it back through the production queue, but um, have it upgraded maybe, but. Well, I don't know if I wanted to do that, um, but I did want to. There is this new Minister of Science. You can see this this panel is now scrollable. Not that one, but this one. New Minister of Science. Okay. Huh. Technical specialist. I don't know why Wilhelm Fritt is even here. But, um, Lindbergh, don't really know. Bissell, don't really know. Gustav Krupp, of course, we have Krupp Steel. Um, Carl Winsel, I think I may have heard that name, but that may be just wishful thinking. Of course, Willie Messerschmitt and Heinkel. Um, okay, well, um, here is a first flaw in um, that I'm seeing, historical flaw. Um, with um, Black Ice. Why does Willie Messerschmitt get Jet Engine Practical Decay minus 5 and nothing with Heinkel for Jet Engine? Especially seeing as Jet Engines are promoted and developed by Heinkel, not Schmitt, Messerschmitt. Um, that that's if anything the opposite should be true. Um, I I know well the first um first sort of operational jet fighter that's not really put into production is the Heinkel. It predates the Messerschmitt. It just wasn't that much good, better. You know, wasn't gooder enough um, to warrant you know putting into production. Um, now the first production jet engine fighter to go and see combat is, you know, the um, ME-262 by Messerschmitt for sure. Now there's, before both of those are ever flying, um, well, there those two, because then there's an earlier um, Heinkels that just have a jet engine literally just mounted underneath the, I don't, I, and from the drawings I've seen, um, I have not seen a, a photo of it yet, but it was a test vehicle. Don't know if it still had the propeller on it, but it looked like it still has the 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 normal fighter engine, you know, um, piston engine, fighter engine in it, just with a, a jet engine with struts things bolted on below it, just you know, just to, to test flying things. So I don't know if the propellers are still there or not. They weren't shown on the, the the drawing. This stuff was secret, people, and they you know bonfired a lot of documents and photos and what towards the end of the war. So. Um, there very well could be a super secret test plane like that, that, and they photographed, but all of those, you know, 
literally gone. Now someday some Russian captured, you know, um, files may find the photos of somewhere or something. But um, yeah, so, um, you know, so before that, what we're seeing, what is it, the Caproni in Italy is actually um, doing uh, prototype, but fighters prototype um, built purpose built jets three war in Italy. Now again, um, you know, good measurement 109s will go faster than it. It's not that fast of a jet. It's just a jet engine. It's not a, you know, a much faster of a jet engine. So these give various um, different buildings as time goes on, plus um, the... Okay, from what I understand is if you have this guy selected, there will be events during, I don't know how often, don't know if it's a one and done, um, probably not, but because you can swap these back and forth, that will give a building that will make um, submarine production easier somewhere on the map, okay? Plus the practical, you know, um, uh, ongoing uh, thing here of minus 5% on money and less on submarine practical decay. Okay. So, um, you know, these are ongoing uh, benefits to what's what's happening here. I don't know why Wilhelm Frick is even here. Maybe he should be. I'm not saying he shouldn't. I just don't know why. He is um, sort of uh, Minister of the Interior, which is sort of head of the police, because that's why he's also here as um, head of security. Uh, now often in Max you put in Goebbels for that. Um, well, I guess they don't, not land you nor organization. Used to give, well, there's some benefits, money and whatnot there, where he's now taken down ICs. Franz von Poppen. Okay. Reinhard Heydrich. Uh, that's way too early for Reinhard Heydrich as Minister of Security. Well, I would say... I don't know. I don't know. Um, all right. Well, let's see. Shocked. Okay. National manpower modifier down 15%. Money down 5%. I'm still not exactly sure how they're going to be using money in this version of Black Ice. I did not like it in the last one. Um, I see, yeah, he's the guy of the top leadership, most understands economies. Okay. Uh, on that, but I'll, you know, I know some of these resource. He's more, I would say, a labor specialist, but whatever. Stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll put in Shaq. Foreign Minister, that's good. Oh, Head of Security. Um, we just don't need him there. Don't know. You know, eventually, I guess we get, um, uh, Himmler. You know, who is head of security? Um, in 1936. With the Nazi organization. I don't know that there was one. You know, it would, I would say by 1936, Okay, there's the Orpo. Yeah, I, I would go, well, I guess, I mean, not that there's a difference between these two. Um, just, I would, I would put it as Himmler, but um, and by 1936. Okay, Chief of the Air Force, Chief of the Navy, Chief of the Army, Chief of Staff, Head of Intelligence. That's sort of the, the standard. Um, that's the new one added. Okay, um, great compromiser. Okay, so there's ministers. Oh, we can, um, a lot of these laws are the same. Um, 
as normal. Um, but just um, extended conscription, normal conscription. How are we doing for manpower? That looks pretty damn good. I would say, and I don't know what, the, you know, extend, extended conscription, massive conscription, normal conscription. What do those mean? Extended. Um, does that mean, uh, some of these people may not be English as first language. Is that extensive conscription? Or is that extended, meaning longer? Normal I don't know what people think of as normal um, in peacetime, uh, a year to two years, extended four years, massive. Though well, that's that. See, that's what um, volunteer, normal, extended, massive. The tense and languages here, um, where um, service by requirements, which which had been the the top thing, is just you're in the army now. For how long? Well, until we don't need you anymore. We're at war. You know, it's not like, oh, after four years, I get to get out. Like in the Vietnam War, it was, um, if I, hopefully I'm getting this correct. When you were conscripted into, for the United States Army, you were conscripted for four years into the United States Army. And after you get out of basic training, oh, do you want out early? This is one, one thing that people don't really realize with the Vietnam Army, um, or the Army in Vietnam. The overwhelming majority of the soldiers in Vietnam volunteered to go there. The overwhelming majority of soldiers in Viet serving in Vietnam volunteered to go there unlike what a lot of the popular media and culture will tell you. Now, I would say most of the soldiers, more than half, serving in Vietnam were conscripted. Did I just contradict myself? No. You were conscripted into the army. It was going to be like for four years currently. You could volunteer to go to Vietnam and you know you have to go through training and all this but then go be in Vietnam for one year and then you're out or you can stay for four years and hang out in Germany or you know an American base or some other place so do you want to give four years of your life to being in the army somewhere you know peaceably or go to war for a year and go home that is why um, this from you know documentaries that I've seen um, on Vietnam. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But um, so now, so most of those soldiers there were conscripted, but they volunteered to go to Vietnam to get out of service earlier, and it was a uh, fixed contract kind of thing. And so you could count down to 365 days, and then you get to go home and you get to get out of the army you're not in forever you're in for uh, a service time period and you're out in in world war ii you're in until we don't need you anymore whether it's wounded or um some other reason that they want to let you out though i think that was incredibly rare it was more likely if you were um some reason they wanted you on the home front they kept you in uniform and had you on the home front, whether as a technical specialty, a trainer back in, you know, in the USA, or a technical developer, or a bunch of other people, you know, including Hollywood stars, many of them um, volunteered to go into the army. People like Jimmy Stewart and Clark Gable, who both flew bomber missions over Germany, or were on bombers. Not all of them. Were pi I don't think Gable was a pilot. I think he was just a gunner on a on a plane. Yeah, Clark Abel and Jimmy Stewart um, did a service of, you know, bombing. But, and they, they demanded it to go and would not. And so um, Jimmy Stewart served, I 
think a bit longer in, you know, bombers flying Germany. Clark Gable did it for, you know, I don't know how many missions. Um, I think it was 25 was the standard missions. And then sort of like, hey, you're done bombing Germany. Um, not that we're done with you. But then I think after that, you know, after he went and actually saw combat, did the thing, got shot at, and then then went back and made, while still in the army, you know, appeared in movies or, you know, um, bond sales rallies and other propaganda stuff. But they didn't let him out of the army or the Army Air Corps, but it's part of the army. Um, after that, you know, but he did go and serve as a combat plane personnel. Jimmy Stewart was a pilot, if I'm not mistaken. And I think saw more missions. I'm, I'm just saying I'm think I'm, I'm not, don't have the facts in front of me. I'm not sure. So, yeah, and those are just two very high profile. If you've heard of them, um, Hollywood stars, some of the biggest Hollywood stars at the time, went, served, um, and then, you know, once they had their tour of duty, neither of them were, well, some of them, I think maybe even both of them, starred in training films, you know, things produced for the Army by Hollywood on commission. Um, but then went and likely, and I don't know exactly, um, were also making regular Hollywood movies after their operation, but would still appear in uniform at times for public rallies and whatnot. So... For the most part, people weren't let out of service until um, basically the war is basically over. So, you know, that's so massive conscription. Is that, I'm guessing, sort of, you know, service by requirements. Um, but. Or seeing daily descent change. So you don't really want to do that unless you have to. Extension. Now this may be service by requirements. Now to my knowledge, to my knowledge, until the war gets started for Germany, they're not doing service by requirements. They're doing um, this is my understanding. It depends on how you want to how the game interprets what was happening historically. Um, So um, we're going to go down to that, partially for the IC and lack of daily descent change. Um, so that would be normal. I would say it was normal conscription by at 36 up until either the war actually starts, if you will, or um, however you want to want to say that they were on normal. You're, you're given a um, a standard set period of time to be um, in the army. Once that time is up, or the Navy or whatever, you leave. Now you're liable for recall in huge numbers, if not eventually virtually everyone that was you know conscripted in 36 are eventually recalled to some unit by i don't know 42 44 or something in germany and i'm talking specifically about germany here um so again this is to my understanding um please if you're new here i understand i call this uh historical commentary because i don't have notes facts and figures and going off of memory which is by its very nature faulty um and so i will make faults so before you go gamer says um google it or something if you know what i mean uh and confirm or deny and then you go yeah gamer said and i i googled it now, I don't know what superior strength does anymore. You used to go through this a couple of times. Now, I don't, now maybe it's it's here. I don't normally up strength German units. Partially because I want to play historical. And so I'm presuming they're, they're sort of um, doing it on the historical basis. Now we can see like manpower costs. 
by going up, you know, if we could, goes larger. So you can go down. And so I don't know. If you are, um, let's go over to this map. Iran, shall we say. And you have a manpower kind of limitation and building cost limitations. And you've got a big border. And although you know you can't defend all the border everywhere, but let's say if you're feeling the threat of the Soviet Union, and if you wish to um, uh, decrease the strength of your forces uh, so that you can have more forces because they're cheaper and easier to build to fully you know, defend your border, that could be a very legitimate thing to do. Or if you find whatever the current starting strength of your nation, and again, I don't know how well they've done it from nation to nation, um, if you feel that you need to do that. So um, increase it. So I'm going with this at the moment is no longer seems to be useful to me because of this. And I checked this. Let's come in. Let's do a standard. This is now, instead of the original Hoi 3, where you got a 3,000-man regiment, which is what is sort of historical, roughly, um, a regiment or brigade, um, they're doing 9,000, so instead of three of these, you have one, is, is the concept. Um, since most divisions, you would have one. Let's throw on some artillery, some anti-tank, some reconnaissance, some engineers. Transport, you need transport and headquarters. So now we are we are now using a seven brigade as start instead of eventually unlocking like it was in 10.33 and before unlocking it to go to the extra brigade. I don't know that this is at all a bad idea. Um, I sort of wonder for Germany why we only have civilian and horse transport. I'm sure there's probably some way to unlock more, but no. Eh, in 36, they had military trunks. Yeah, they definitely did. Now, some you know, I say that because some of the trucks are basically the trucks. There's also a a civilian use for them, but they had you know um, three axle, uh, though that wasn't the most common. Three axle trucks, a lot of two axle trucks that were fairly rugged. You know. Um, you know, the U.S. Army, the quintessential U.S. Army truck of World War II is three axles. And I say that because sometimes they have, um, depending on the truck, uh, up to four tires on one axle. You know, you, you stick on the one tire and then you have the other thing that bolts another tire on the outside of it so that you create additional ground um, pressure or... Uh, Less ground pressure per, per tire, but you, you're distributing your ground pressure out a bit more. So, um, yeah, sometimes they'll have you know, a 10, 10 tires or something on a truck, normally only two at, two at front, normally at least. Um, so, yeah, that's the big quintessential truck of World War II for the U.S., and that is probably one of the best truck types for the war, though the Czechs um, have really good stuff that the Germans use. Limited quality, they never, quantity, they never really turned that up to even eight or nine production from the Czech factory on trucks, but they use them. Now they use lots of civilian trucks too, um, but again, I don't know their definitions and how they may change. So now you can have this kind of thing, and that's what this is meant for. The original um, mixed support and motorized support um, units were meant to be used when you had three F and three regiments, a mixed support, and then like one other um, focus support, you know, um, if you will, like anti-tank or something like that. And then your, um, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah. So now that we've done that, so um, that is looking good. I want to save this now that we've got this far. I know I haven't even saved this once yet. Okay. Good. Very nice. This is, I mean, I haven't gone anywhere with it yet. We haven't even had the clock move an hour forward. But I hope this has all been informative. 
Uh, what, let's so um, but they talk about this is more stable. We haven't even gotten through all of the text that we could should do. Well, I guess we're going to do some of these. Yeah, we already looked there. Let's look at operating. We need to unlock those. So let's forty one and um hey, why not? Let's do some military police. Yes, that should go away. Um now I'm going to come over here and um okay i have not even done this before new building types as we can see a bunch of grayed out um they'll be given by events and we've already talked about some of that um but we're going to do some industry here Sorry about the TV noise. Sorry about TV noise. I should do better with that. Ah, that's bad. Okay. Ah, oh well. Okay, let's see. Back here, we're going to. And again, focus on where at least we're starting with heavy industry because that's 25% times everything else. So you want to focus maximally where you have heavy industry. Because each, each one of these is, each factory is 25% more powerful per heavy industry that you make here versus making somewhere else. I think some of these will get heavy industries either by events or, well, only by events. You don't get to build them. Um, or maybe the uh, ministers also do some, I think I read. Um, but yet yeah, an event that happens. I guess, I guess by definition, I mean an event that is like, oh, pop up something here, click, you know, because, because whatever you want to, oh, well, there's also the heavy industry um because of your national focus or you know looking at um you know examining your factories uh, that's one way to get it um there may be you know just a historical thing i don't think dre i mean i know i made it it's been a long time specifically adds any well no it it, it does in the sort of setup phase of it um but i mean i don't think there's internal you know as time goes on Maybe there is for the four-year plan. Boy, it's been a long time, so I don't remember details like that. I have to look those up. They all seemed like good ideas at the time by my research and evaluation. And again, like some of the stuff, like when I was talking earlier with the um, conscription, you know, uh, word definitions matter, but how are you interpreting the historical facts and what are you um, looking at that in the game? So we're going to move all of these guys up to the top. Get those focused into production. Um, I think we're just going to do that for the moment here. Uh, let's reduce this down some more. I don't, we do want a lot of supplies in production. And now back to, back to here. We'll click on Berlin. Okay, I'm not going to run down all of these, but um, obviously shipyards, I'm sure some of these may be buildable here. Um, no, they're not. Okay, I thought they might be in ports. Um, I guess not. But by events, you can get some of these. 
desperate defense i don't think those are weather impact these are my understanding will be seasonal buildings and think russian front think things that make offensives um at least by germans i think the soviet i think i'm not sure just because i haven't looked at the code and or had anybody authoritarian authoritatively um uh comment on it um that i think like the weather impact stuff um soviets during that time period get um, bonuses so they can do winter offensives and germany won't but think of things like that with these buildings uh police centers infrastructure rail rail terminuses those help overall supply throughput you can you don't get to make those i guess base hospital Trickle back research centers, training bases, manufacturing plants. These, um, my understand, help with supply production. Not that you don't have the normal, you know, sh shifting your normal ICs around, but they just help with supply production. Okay. Well, I think again we're just looking at this as quick. sort of look at okay um well uh, we'll give them money for rare materials now let's see even though we've done the rhineland thing you probably i normally want to before doing the rhineland thing try to see if i can get a trade offer with britain well good thing we can do some of this um how much money does britain have a lot of money and they could use a lot of trade so let's Let's just max this out. And then France up at France. They currently have also a lot of money. Let's see if we can get that going just to have that as sort of a base importation or exportation, I should say. Um, supply sales. And the US could use some too. Let's see, they're at. 12 i think so let's well no, no, no. let's go to like 11. hopefully get a stable content i guess i know we could do one more but i'd rather have those um be steady sources of income okay turkey um they at least in the past oh would like metal well how do you do turkey? Okay, Kubelwag and activate. Opal Blitz activate. Now those may be activating the the truck. Okay, um we wanna do I think heavy aircraft, uh, gasoline engine welded armor. Um heavy aircraft versus light aircraft. The Japanese had light aircraft, no arm no armor in their their fighters. Is primarily, I think, dealing with fighters and their no, their bombers too. Uh, they had, yeah, for their bombers and their fighters, they had no armor and no self sealing tanks. They just didn't have the technology more for self sealing tanks, I believe. But um, the bombers they wanted really long range, so they wanted them super light. And the fighters um, also long range, but also the idea that they were always going to be attacking either enemy bombers or enemy fighters so that the engine block was sort of going to be the armor if you will um so you're, they were never going to have a fighter aircraft on their tails they were never going to be running away from the enemy or something i guess so they didn't need those um uh armors no they get shot up a lot by american um, bombers and fighters or fighters but so um gasoline obviously you know gasoline and diesel germany was running um I think mostly gasoline and um, welded armor instead of cast armor Germany. Okay. Um, I think it's special. I think historically, though. Oh no, I even say here the Royal Navy and Kriegsmarine use. Okay, yeah, the Royal Navy and Kriegsmarine use up um, cemented steel. It's not concrete like on the sidewalk. Um, it's a different sort of process up cemented steel which was probably the best armor steel available at the time but limited its usage to capital ships and carriers right um so we can do cemented steel and i think we're going to do closed hanger instead of open hanger 
Um, just to give you the context of what those are, you get to pick for your nation. Now, I will, okay, um, pause. Yes, we are road, airport, um, all resources shortage, ship steel production. We got a bunch of factories, looks like happened. Okay, research labs, efficiency, efficiency. Um, Three-year draft, um, we have lost the effects of it. Yes, okay, good. Um, okay. <laughs> these here some are still here now how do i put this um i'm not exactly sure how they're going to be using um i know in they started like pay soldiers and whatnot in 10.33 and i just disabled all that with with tre very early on so you didn't have it and i also disabled um trading in resources um let's see is that there yeah here um these things i just um basically um it's all still there i just said oh do the want to do trade in resources yes or yes or activate it and i just changed what it activated so it never activated any of these things just changed the event that was sort of the easiest way to do it my understanding is these resources, if you control them, like Germany's controlling this one, you get its effects, right? My understanding is that if you or an allied nation, you know, an actual allied nation, controls them, you get those effects. America and Britain, in 1936, America, I do believe, I know for sure they wouldn't sell helium to, um, an old, it's only, I think, in the 90s did they start selling helium overseas, um, but maybe they did to people like Britain, I don't know for sure, but I don't think they were selling helium to places like Britain, they definitely wouldn't sell helium to Germany, but they would sell other things to Germany um because it was a um precious natural or strategic resource that they wanted to be able to do use and um they were create they created massive we're still draining it off though i don't think i don't know if we're replacing it as much helium reserves uh selling it but um i'm going with the idea with the original game that these special bonuses are only for your allies. The Soviet Union and Germany were never really allies, even though they sort of were allies and they jointly conquered Poland and they divvied up some territory. And the Soviet Union was sending in massive amounts of resources and Germany like sold them a big rolling mill um, that Germany thought they were mainly going to use to build battleships, but allowed them to build like um, paint turrets, or otherwise they couldn't have built, um, uh, you know, uh, some of the the the, the tank turret or rolled as opposed to cast. Some were cast, some were rolled steel. They couldn't have done it because they didn't have the the ability to build the the heavy machinery. Um, so some of the T thirty fours or whatever they couldn't have made. So. Um, and some of the armor, other the other armor elements, they couldn't have made without this rolling mill that um, Germany or mills um, maybe sent the Germany sold to them. You know, again um, after Hitler's in power, uh, some of the stuff happened in the '30s before the war starts, and um, one of the motorcycles with sidecars, the Germany sells the technology and some of the starting plants that become the standard Soviet motorcycle. Um, the uh, PAC-36, all the plans and details and some of the machinery to get it started are sold to the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union's main anti-tank gun, at least in the beginning of the war, is, this, is the German anti-tank gun, except they've just gone up to 
45 millimeters instead of 37 millimeters. But all of the recoil technology, all of the rest of the technology of the gun is the same as the Germans. Um, it's not parts compatible even, I don't think. Say I don't think, but, but you know, they're selling the, the technical know-how to the Soviet Union. They're doing all that. But I really don't take, you know, there's oil, but the other specialty, I don't think the Soviet Union and Germany are that close to get the shared benefits of, you know, um, you know, this, these type of things um, here, because here is uh, a helium plant here. I don't, I, I know it's here in the game. I'm not disputing that it's here in the game, that, it, that it's real. Um, I just don't know anything about it. Um, sometimes I say uh, I don't think something existed, sometimes uh, that, but, you know, aluminum, you know, Hungary's making aluminum. But to get the special aluminum benefits, not just regular rare materials trade, because I think this, uh, there's going to be a bunch of stuff under here, I'm sure. Um, no, there is no right here, but I, I don't know. But to get the special trade, you need to be aligned with Hungary. Is That's how I'm taking this stuff, including things here, or control, you know, going and control this province for manganese. That's how I'm taking it. Either you need to be closely allied or you need to go in and conquer it. I don't like this trading. I think it's too casual. That is my interpretation of what is going on. I disagree with um, the developers of Hawaii, or not Hawaii 4, of Black Ice on, on this. Doesn't mean they're wrong and I'm right, but I think I'm right and I think they're they're overdoing it. Um, again, that's opinion versus fact. And I, hey, I can have different opinions than my friends, and I still count the guys that make this as friends. So, yes, okay, yeah, we want the events, we want historical, um, about creation of battle commanders, yes, do your worst, char and horse, nice enough, we're just going to go with these guns for the moment, and. Often SS, didn't we do that? Okay, okay, yeah, well, right. Wouldn't really have been considered. Um, there's 7,000 officers, is that right? Yeah. Um, okay, that took a huge trunk of officers out. I don't, that seems awfully big for a few units um, on the map. We got that there. I know I'm just clicking through. Okay, do we have, okay, the. Is there a higher SS unit formation? No, there isn't. Okay. Currently, SS VT as opposed to the TV that does come. Okay, and we have, because I think all those buildings that sprung up, we have um, more ability to research more things. Yay! Uh, so nothing to do here. Uh, mostly these are like 37 or, well, you know how much I like naval air. So let's do that. I think a lot of this is just red here because like these units appeared and they got to, oh, we got to send out supplies, got to send out supplies. Oh, 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 oh. You know, kind of AI being itself. Okay, activate unit, fascist militia brigade. Budget reserves, our budget is settled. We are aware of our potential expenses. Okay, this is the thing that I um, disagree with. Um, I'm also in disagreement with that. Uh, um, World of Blaze mod creator. Again, great guy, and I agree with a lot of his basic principles of um Brazil would like money in exchange for rare materials no thank you um on economies but through Schacht through some of the other people Germany became very aware of hyperinflation and how to manage it internal money usage and internal budget And I do not believe, someone can correct me below if I'm wrong, the Reichsmark was not pegged to the gold standard. Okay. Some currencies were pegged to the gold or silver standard. I do not believe the Reichsmark was because then they would not have had 
their economic um, controls on Reichsmarks leaving the country. They were, it was like, oh, hey, I want to go to France for holidays. And you would go to the, the thing, okay, yes, um, oh, how many days are you going? You're going for five days. Oh, cool. Um, you can take 50 Reichsmarks out. What? What? No, that's, that's all you can take. You can't leave with more than 50 Reichsmarks. You can't, because the ba banking was controlled. You couldn't just, you know, uh, you know, transfer money out of the country through the banks. Yeah, you, you, No, you can't leave with more than 50 Reichsmarks. 10 Reichsmarks a day. That's it. Or, or I'm just making this up, but it was pretty low. This is why a lot of people went on cycling um, uh, holidays and whatnot. Um, because what they were expecting you to do is you would take your 50 Reichsmarks, go to a Bureau of Exchange, and um, get French francs to spend locally in France. To keep balance of payments and whatever, they did not want Reichsmarks flowing out. It wasn't just, say, like with the Jews and other people that were fleeing Germany, you know, and it's not just Jews that were fleeing Germany off, you know, Hollywood stars like Marlena Dietrich fled Germany. They didn't want them to take their big bundles of Reichsmarks or, or just even diamonds or gold or whatever that they may own out of the country. Basically, up until the war starts, you're Jewish, you want to go, fine, leave. There was no restrictions on any Jews leaving the country of them leaving. Oh, you can't take any money or any valuables out with you. So if you want to sell your, your, your ill-gotten mansion by usury or whatever their, you know, anti-Jewish propaganda that they're they're doing fine you can sell it and you'll buy you'll get paid in reichsmark but you can't take those reichsmarks out of that country i mean they found ways to smuggle wealth out of course but it was a smuggling situation there was massive controls about how reichsmarks could leave the country germany just very carefully watched the money supply to make sure that average people weren't being paid so much money for their work or whatever that when they went to go buy something there wasn't enough of it and it was like oh that egg i'll pay ten thousand dollars for that and they'll go i'll pay a hundred thousand dollars they didn't want and obviously i mean except for the highest rate of um some of it would be like a hundred thousand reichsmarks or um were they Deutschmarks, I guess, um, during the Weimar, whatever they're called, um, during the Weimar period, you know, there were 100,000 Reichsmark um, currency that you would have several in your, your pocket um, that you might buy an egg with. Um, you know, they wanted to not make it a, a competitive situation over who can just, you know, splash as much money onto the I want to buy situation over it, over somebody else. So, um, they very much watched the money supply, but paying the workers that were either mining coal or machining um, uh, weapons or um, making women's fashion, that was never a problem for Germany or most of these countries. It was, if those are U.S. dollars, let's just say, it's kind of maybe what's supposed to be stacked up there. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be silver or U.S. dollars, but it's how many U.S., how much physical U.S. dollars, either physical U.S. dollars or U.S. dollars in German government accounts somewhere, including in America, U.S. eventually freezes government accounts for German national accounts um, of U.S. dollars in America. How much dollars do they have, wherever, the German government, and how much gold and silver the government has to exchange for other currencies or to buy something for import. So this is where I fundamentally disagree in this game. There's international economies and there are domestic economies and this budget thing here that they have and trying to maintain this budget, I think is wrong, BS, incorrect for um, Germany. Now, this episode, I know we're only three days into the game, but has gone on long enough. I've talked a lot about it. I've stayed, try to be more or less focused on um, the mod. Again, I love a lot of what Black Ice does. There's a few fundamental things I disagree with. I was able to mod them out for TRE if you want to use them. Again, it would be very simple to go, and I, if somebody wanted to personal, privately, go change the code 
in TRE that would bring back everything. Um, it wasn't scrub, you know, it wasn't scrubbed from you can't play it. It was I turned it off with your know-how, and if somebody wants to post the know-how, so they each individual person gets to go in and do it, post the know-how to turn it back on. I'm cool with that. But I say no, so I turn it off. You you can individually turn it on with TRE. We'll see if we do TRE on um, uh, for Black Ice 10.4. Oh, okay, everyone, thanks so much for making it this far. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Please like, post your comments, your questions. Questions are very important because maybe I can answer. If you have them, I can put them in the video. Um, yeah, I get to make another video or just answer it in a general video. Um, and more people will, will get that answer. So those are all important. Um, share this video. Hey, you know, there's that black ice form. You might want to go make a post there at how good this video is there. Um, just another one, please. Somebody do it. This again, you know, don't spam it, but you know, one or two people really help out. Um, uh, cause I, they, I mean, they throw me a lot of, um, views and I'm going to thank them for that anyways, but thank you so much. Everyone see you next time for more, yes, more Hearts of Iron.